Hello friends, I'm Brian, and this is Gizmo Board Games. And today it is time for my look back at what I played and what I produced last month, March 2023. So last month, uh, getting into the videos, if you haven't been able to check them out or you missed them because YouTube didn't let you know or you're not subscribed, which you can do by hitting the button below, uh, you can check out the videos that I put out or released, I guess is the best word, last month. Uh, so last month I started off and I did a hot take of Distilled, uh, basically the day after it came in from Kickstarter. I got it, I unpacked it, I learned it, I played it solo, and then I did a hot take of it. Since then I've also played it not solo, and I feel roughly the same as I did in that solo take. So if you want to check it out, uh, please do. I might put it up there. Otherwise it's a pretty recent video, you can find it by looking through my videos. Then I did my February look back, this video for last month, or for the previous last month, uh, when I talked about what I did in February. After that, uh, I had a couple of videos that were my favorite component series that I did uh, for Button Shy and for Lacrimosa. So if you like my favorite component series, then you're one of the 20 people who have watched. Uh, but all jokes aside, I do enjoy doing those quick little uh, peeks at some of the components I enjoy from games I've played and this past month I did a short one about my favorite component from button shy games and my favorite component from the game Lacrimosa Last month I also did a review of Champions of Midgard a game from Gray Fox Games that came out in 2015 16 one of those years I don't remember off the top of my head and so but there, yeah, I did a review of Champions of Midgard, the base game, with a little bit of talk about the two expansions I own as well. Uh, the big thing I did last month, though, is the tour of my shelves. So you could see all everything I've got on all my shelves around here. Kind of a mini uh, studio game room tour, whatever you want to call it. I shot my shelves on request, and I promised I would do it after 100 subscribers. And thanks to you all, I was able to do that because I have surpassed 100 subscribers by quite a little bit now in that I've almost doubled uh, even in the past few months of my subscribers. So thank you all for tuning in and coming back over and over again and subscribing to the channel. I really I really do appreciate it and it keeps, keeps me going. So those were the uh, videos I released last month. Let's go ahead and talk about what I played last month. So in March of 2023, I played 80 different games, or I should say I had 80 games played, 80, 80 times I played a game. That's probably the best way to put it, because only 41 of those were different games, so I averaged about uh, two plays of a game for each game I played last month. So 80 total games, 41 different games of those 80 plays. Nine of which are new to me, and that's kind of what the bulk of this video is going to be about, is me kind of breaking down those nine games in order of how I kind of enjoyed them on the first impression, because uh, a lot of them only well, played once or maybe twice. So don't take this as a, a top list or whatever uh, for me, but just like my thoughts on the nine new to me games I played in March. Uh, and last month I did replay 12 months uh, that I played in February as well. So a lot of things I've got to the table over and over again, either with the same groups or for other reasons. Um, so yeah, 12 repeat plays, nine new plays, and that's what we want to look at now. So looking at the nine new to me games that I played in March, my number nine or the one that I right now enjoyed the least. These are all subject to change and move as I play them more, or I decide I don't want to play them again. Perhaps, I don't think any of these I'd shy away from playing again. I, I did enjoy all nine of these plays, so these all are welcome back to the table anyway. But my least favorite new-to-me game that I played in March is a small little uh, one-to-six player cooperative game called Mass Transit. And I played it solo a couple times, and then I played it in a group a couple times. And one of the things I noticed about this, and while it was a fun game, an enjoyable game, it seems like it can be kind of programmed so I don't know how much longevity the game has and, and that's kind of why it's here on the nine spot it was fun it, it fit the mold of getting you know six players around the table playing together in a game that you know a small box I could carry anywhere with me and so 
we did play it in six players, and we figured out uh, after the first play kind of the trick to it, and then we easily won the second play, and the same thing happened with my two solo plays. And that's what I worry about is um, whether it's a, just a puzzle that's relatively easy to solve. And so I don't know how much longevity mass transit has, but I won't mind pulling it out. You know, it's easy to, to carry around, and I could take it around for different groups for different playthroughs, and, you know, it plays 10, 15, 20 minutes at most, so... It's not, not a bad little travel pocket game, and I don't regret it. I got it for a good price and enjoyed it enough. But, again, I, I can concerned about its longevity. That's why it's number nine. The number eight new-to-me game from March is a dice worker placement game that I never heard of. My buddy saw it in the store, asked me if I might like it, and I said, sure. <laughs> um, and so he picked it up. And I learned it a little bit, and I might do a review of it, full-on review of it in the future, once I get a few more plays of under under my belt. But it's a game called Moestiro. Moestiro? I'll maybe put it on the board. It came out uh, last year in 2022 uh, to almost no fanfare. I'd never heard of it. Uh, I don't know how many people have heard of it. If, you, if you're one of those people who have heard of it in the past, please... Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts of it are. Uh, it kind of came and went without much fanfare as far as I know. But it's a dice worker placement and you're helping building uh, this cathedral in the city in, I believe it's Portugal. And you're generating resources from your worker placement. The die values kind of matter where they're placed on the board and um, the, the value itself you know, determines order and number of resources you're able to generate based on the number of pips on the dice. And you're collecting the resources to do other things to eventually help you score the points by helping build the cathedral. It's an okay game. It plays like a game I like. I like dice worker placement. I like resource management. I like scoring points. Uh, but, I, again, I don't know how much replay value this one has. Uh, it's got two different sets of cards you can play with. And it's got some set collection and things like that. But I just... I have other games that I like all the mechanics of better, such as the one in front of me here, uh, Santa Maria, for dice worker placement and generating things from your, your dice values. Uh, just Moestro is an okay game. It's enjoyable, uh, but there's just plenty of other games that kind of do the same thing that I enjoyed more. So that's why it sits there on the number eight spot. My number seven new-to-me game uh, from last month, and this is where I had a hard time rack and stacking basically all the way from seven to one um a lot of decent games that i enjoyed playing and wouldn't mind playing again but nothing that was super great that i knew was definitely gonna be number one nor nothing that i said nah uh put it higher on the list so basically seven through one pretty interchangeable i went ahead and put joan of arc orleans the roll and write game at number seven uh it's an enjoyable game it's actually a, not a roll and write it's a, it's a draw and write you're drawing the uh if you've played Orleans, kind of the workers, the villagers out of a bag, and then you're using their abilities in various ways on the, the paper board to try to collect points and race two things so that way you can lock out the opponent. I've only played this one solo. It's got a decent solo map. I haven't played with others, so I don't know how it compares to the regular board, but it seems like it's probably pretty close to the same thing, um, just with the randomness of the, the automotive cards versus kind of being able to eyeball what your opponents might be looking at doing so you can swipe it up before they do but it's good good enough i i like the game orleans i'll probably just choose that more often especially if i've got people to play with but for a quick solo game uh, that feels like orleans i will definitely uh, come back to joan of arc orleans roll and write another quick draw and write game uh or roll and write flip and write whatever you want to call it that fills out a spot in my collection for me to, you know, kill some time by myself, a half hour, 45 minutes, and get a, a decent play experience. Uh, so that's why it's here at number seven. Number six, I played the game Jaws. Uh, basically, uh, it's playing the movie Jaws. Uh, it's one versus many, or I guess one versus three, whether you're controlling one, two, or all three of the characters in a one-on-one -on -one battle, you know, plays up to four players. One person controls the shark. One person going to control Quint, one person Hooper, one person Brody, or one person all three. And it's got two phases, two acts, kind of like in the movie. The first one is trying to keep the shark off the beach, rescue the swimmers before they get eaten, and uh, try to put some barrels on the shark so you can better track them for the second act. 
And uh, depending on how well which side does when the first act uh, end is triggered, that team gets an advantage for the second act. And on the second act, you're on the orca, the boat there from the end of the movie, and you're trying to kill off Bruce the shark before uh, he kills off all of you. It's neat. I haven't played that many uh, one versus many games. I've got Beast on the way. Should be here any day now. I'm excited about that one. Um, but this was a nice, a nice warm up for uh, for that. Or maybe this is better than that. I don't know. But I enjoyed the play. It felt like the movie. I enjoyed the movie Jaws. And uh, yeah, it was a fun fun little play for us. Uh, we played it three. I controlled uh, two of the heroes, and the other two controlled the shark and the third hero. And we, we eked out a victory over the shark uh, by some, some lucky draws on the, the last uh, last turn or two. Lucky rolls. It's got some dice rolling. and So we got a little bit lucky and were able to fend off the shark, much like in the movie. So that's Jaws, a uh, little one versus many game. My number six new to me game from last month. My number five new to me game from last month is an expansion that was new to me. And this is the... Uh, the new expansions for Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. Uh, specifically, I played the Crisis, which is the cooperative version of Ares Expedition. And I like this one. I had a, a rough time with it. I had a rough time playing solo uh, Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition normally. And I thought maybe this would give me a better chance at winning. It did not. I still uh, quite got beat. But I like the flip of it. You're, you're starting off with... Mars already terraformed, and you're just trying to keep it that way, despite all the bad events happening. And uh, you can play it, you know, like one to five, I think, one to four, um, cooperatively. I played solo, obviously, but I look forward to introducing both versions of the game, Terraforming Mars Areas Expedition or the Crisis expansion with a cooperative. I could see each one uh, being played in any of my groups, uh, depending on how we feel that day. So I do like having that change to a game I already enjoy, uh, as an option. So that's my number five new-to-me game from March. My number four new-to-me game from March for first-time play is another Kickstarter game that arrived. It's Distilled. In Distilled, you are buying resources during uh, the buy phase, and then you're using them to try to make certain spirits, depending on which recipes you've purchased or have uh, from the start, to get the most points and to meet some of the goals that are on the board. Um, I like the uh, the process of the washback where you're taking one of, or two cards out of your your stack of what you think you're making, and then when you flip it over, you actually see what you made, depending on what gets washed away in the uh, the process. And I think that's a neat little take on otherwise a, a re relatively standard buy cards and then use them to get things game. And that's kind of going to be the nature of a lot of these rest of the top four our, I guess the top five count, Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition, is using cards to get things and do things. That's the whole top five of New to Me games. I really enjoy those. Uh, Distilled, if you want to check out my hot take, I uh, will uh, leave it here, hopefully. And uh, yeah, so go check that out. I think I mentioned this twice in this video now. So if you want more deep thoughts about Distilled, you can check it out there. It falls at the uh, number four of my favorite New to Me game, First Impressions from March 2023. The number three new to me game from March 2023 is 51st State. This is a game where you're uh, getting cards and then you're using them to build out your state to produce things, to take actions, or to kind of score points based on what's in your state. Uh, you're playing so many rounds, or really you're playing to a set number of points, and then you're going to add in however many buildings you have left. Each card has three different uses. Uh, so multi-use cards, I really enjoy those. Uh, one thing you can do is make deals and get more goods uh, you can put them out in your board and then you have them for either production or actions or you can go ahead and raise them with an action and uh, just get resources directly from the card by discarding it with some tokens that you're required i enjoy the concept of the game i played it only solo so far and i I don't know if I played it 100% right because I felt like my hands were pretty tied. So I don't know if I just was mismanaging my resources or, or whatever, or just had bad luck. Because part of the game is being able to play off what your opponents do. But once your opponents pass, that's it. You can't use them anymore. 
and uh, my AI opponent was passing after two turns every round because of just the draw was allowing them to, to raise one of my areas, so I, I couldn't even get many out because as soon as I get one out, they would just kill it off and it was gone. And then I couldn't use all their cards because they were past the rest of the round after that. And so they were sitting there collecting all kinds of things I couldn't use while I was here not being able to do anything with my little bit of uh, mat because they kept shooting away all my things. So I just had to keep making deals for resources and use those. And the, the weird thing is I still won by a lot. So... I felt like I wasn't playing the game right, and I still won by a lot, and that concerns me. So I don't know if I need to check out the rules again, or if just the... And I only played the base game. There's a different auto solo version that came with uh, the Master or the Ultimate set, whatever I've got, uh, that to check out, which is more uh, a Toma card base. So maybe that one's better. The base one from the base game, I, I just... It, it didn't sit well with me, and then... I still won by a lot, and that concerns me because there wasn't even a challenge despite me feeling like my hands were tied the whole game. But it is still an enjoyable game. I like the concept of the game. Uh, I liked the play of the game. I like the thought process and the resource management of the game, and that's why it squeaked in just ahead of Distilled and Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition Crisis. Like I said, 1 through 7 is all interchangeable, and when I put this list together, I decided I like 51st State just slightly better than the two previous ones, so it's here at the 3. Number 2 is a two-player game. Uh, it's beer and Bread, and I played this one with my buddy. I don't often get two-player games played, so it was nice to be able to actually play this game because there's no solo mode and it's only two players. But it's a game where, you're, again, you're using multi-use cards to generate beer and bread, either... Um, abilities uh, to help you do the things you need to do in the game and score points or ingredients to build the beer and the bread or I should say make the beer and bread and then uh, your score is based on the one you did worst at so you need to focus both you can't just focus beer and hope to score big because if you don't get any points for bread your score is zero and it's a neat little back and forth uh, with a little bit of card drafting as you're passing hands back and forth in the odd rounds and then just managing the cards you have in the even rounds, and the resources are limited in the even rounds. So it's a, it's a lot of tight thinkingness, a lot of fun, and it, I really enjoyed it. So I look forward to being able to hopefully play it again a little bit more often than I normally do play two-player games. And Beer and Bread was my number two favorite new-to-me game from March of 2023. And the number one new-to-me game of March 2023, and again, interchangeable really one through seven for the most part so this is slightly just slightly eked out and could easily fall way behind these games with more plays but that is the game that's literally right over my head the pursuit of happiness i got the big box in uh from kickstarter this month and i pulled it out and played it solo a couple times and i really enjoyed it and that's kind of the difference between uh the the other two i talked about the solo was I really enjoyed this solo mode a bit. It was good thinky. It was a tight race. I lost, I think, both times, but I was really close to the minimum score threshold to be considered a win, but it really is kind of a beat your own score game. But the pursuit of happiness is basically game the game of life. Uh, you know, that Parker Brothers, I think Parker Brothers, right? A uh, game from your childhood, my childhood, everybody's childhood. But you're not just spinning a dial and moving and kind of whatever happens to you is your life. You're you're making these choices. You're using you're using your your time of your life as the resource. It's a little bit of worker placement, resource management, card management, and uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. You're making a story of a life for somebody, and you've got goals you're trying to meet, and you know you can make partners that you either date or marry or. or get really in with and the, the deeper you get with them maybe the less you're going to be able to to focus on your job or, or your fun or whatever because you've only got so much time and you've only got so much money and you've only got so much resources of knowledge and, and ideas and creativity or, or whatever they are in the game and I just think it's really enjoyable a uh, nice take on a game, game style I like uh, you know card management resource management time management worker placement all into one to create a nice feeling theme of, you know, a life, a, a, a life in the life of someone you're making on your board. And 
they can be whatever you want them to be to an extent, you know, because you're, you're drafting what's in play at the time. But based on what's on the board, you know, you're making these really interesting lives and you're trying to, to make it the fullest life you can and get the most points. And I think the theme's neat. Uh, I really... I really enjoyed it. I liked my play, and I'm looking forward to introducing this to some other people, and especially my daughter, who really likes the game of life. If you've checked out her top five, your favorite games from last year, the game of life was way up there, and so I'm looking forward to uh, introducing this to her. Uh, Hopefully, she can handle it and uh, enjoys it, too, without the randomness of the spinning the wheel. And so that's why that one is my number one uh, favorite game from last month. That was new to me. And that's it. That's it for this video. I appreciate you being here and sitting in as I reflect on the last month of gaming and videos. And if you like this one, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe below if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments below what you think of these games and what you played in March of 2023 that was new to you and what you thought about those games. I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Bye.